in this video, the property built-in function and decorator in Python 3. Let's start with a look at the docs. The main thing I want to highlight here is there's actually two completely different design patterns for using the property function. The first one is the one you see here, and the second one is just below here. And it importantly states that here that this code example above is equivalent to the first example. So basically there's two patterns for using the property function. Now let's start with the basics. I do have examples here for each of the two design patterns from the docs, but I want to start with something simpler just to make the whole concept clearer. So you know that when you create classes, uh, you can just assign attributes to them and it'll come out like this, right? Pretty normal. We can create a car class and then assign the name Joey and then boom, we have a car named Joey. Cool. But these getter, setter, deleter um, attributes within a car class kind of get tricky to do in one liners like this. So what if you want to do a conditional, right? So you'll name the car Joey if true, else we'll name it, I don't know, Dave. Like it, it's going to start getting complicated. So what these do, what the property attribute does is it just makes it way easier to deal with setting attributes, deleting attributes, creating attributes. And to me, what's important is how it helps with validation. All right, now let's talk about the two methods for using the property decorator or the property function. I'll tell you straight up that I prefer using the decorator. I think it's a better way to do it. it just looks way more clean. And although it's actually somehow one line of code more, this is 18 and this is 17, in this method, you have to create your functions first, and then you assign those functions to the attribute or whatever it's called. I, I just don't like how you do the functions first, and then we finally create the name at the very end. I'd much rather just create the name at the beginning and get started. So let's do that. Um, in this example, I did uh, instantiate a car. I set its name to be Jimmy. And then I want to change the name to Joey. And when we uh, first print it out, and then when we change it, you're going to see these print statements uh, getting hit. So let's run this. Cool. So here we can see that we're immediately in the getter when we do the print. And then we're in the setter when we set the name to Joey. And then we're in the getter again when we print it again. And so what's cool about this is let's say um, we wanted to add some validation. So let's say we wanted the car name to have to be, I don't know, at least seven characters. So we could say if len greater than six, then we'll set the name, okay? So Joey's not, so what happens? Well, it's still Jimmy because it didn't pass the validation. But if we change it to something longer, like, I don't know, uh, Stephanie, um, when we run this, it'll successfully change. So when you start doing a lot more validation with your classes, when you start having validation around your attributes, um, that's when this property decorator is going to come in handy. And it's just way easier to do it than in this old-fashioned way, right? Cool. So that's the first way of doing it. So here again, uh, I did create those print statements so we can run this exact same thing again, see how it works. Uh, you can see that when it gets printed for the first time, we're calling the get, and then when we want to rename the car, uh, the set name function is called, and then the get name function is called in that second print statement. So happening the exact same way as in our first design pattern, um, it's completely equivalent. Now, like I said, uh, using the decorator is my preferred method of doing it, but you can do it however you want. Basically, the property function is just a better way of organizing your code and doing more complicated validation within your classes. Thanks for watching.